like the uh, 2010 Mustang GT. Everybody remembers what happened then. The 2010 Mustang GT was possibly the biggest flop ever. Before we begin today's rambling, I have to say, Ford, I'm sorry, but I'm not. We have to tell the truth. The Ford Mustang 2021 Mach 1 is potentially the biggest sham in 17 years. We can't be a proper Mustang channel. We can't be a proper automotive enthusiast channel without talking about, yes, again, the Mach 1. Let's be honest, the internet has spoken. People hate it. Wait, Xander, you made a video a couple days ago defending it. No, I defended the transmission choices that Ford used to put in the 2021 Mach 1. 10-speed automatic like what we have now. Awesome proven transmission, good for straight line racing. <laughs> How it does on the road course, eh, I guess it's capable. Not the best, not compared to like a dual clutch transmission, certainly. What I really defended was the fact that they are ditching the MT82 in favor of the Tremec 3160 straight out of the GT350. I'm not necessarily going to change my mind entirely, I guess maybe somewhat, about the car. Let's be honest, this is why people hate it. Let's be honest about what this car actually is. Well, it's a GT350 or a PP2 Mustang GT. Swap the transmissions and there you go. So it's an automatic PP2 or it's a PP2 with the proper 3160. It's a parts bin car. I really wanna like this car. I have nothing but love for the transmission choices. I like the visual styling, the exterior. I like all of that. I like the front lip. I like the fact that it comes with a handling package. Oh, but by the way, if you opt for the automatic, you cannot apparently get the handling package. Anybody that wanted to go, you know, fast and straight line, buy the 10 speed auto, and maybe have a car that can do you know twists and turns and stuff like that on a road course as well. You can't do it. I don't know why Ford, you know what? Ford is always, in my opinion, about 90, they always get to be about 90, sometimes maybe 95% perfect. And the other five to 10%, it's almost like they mess it up on purpose. Supposedly Ford is listening to us, but that can't be true. They can't be true because they would know. Let's backtrack a couple of years. So the 18 Mustang comes out. You can now finally get a performance package GT with an automatic. You have the best of both worlds. Why did they create the Mach 1 in such a manner that that's not true anymore? I don't understand. It's, it's really kind of a slap in the face for those that want a transmission choice. You're forced to choose. I hate that. The way that Ford stacks their options is like the worst that I've ever seen. Like a Chevy Camaro, you can do whatever you want to. You can build that thing from the factory to order any way that you want to. All the way down to the color, the emblems. If you want black emblems, you pay extra for it. If you want different seats, you pay extra for it. If you want different suspension from the factory, you pay extra for it. But you can stack them all together. Why? Why must we choose for it between what you, it's kind of like dealing with Apple. You know, you're monopolizing our choices and I can't stand it. I, I know all of you guys out there feel the same. But yes, let's be honest. The 2021 Mach 1 Mustang is nothing more than a parts bin car. It is a last hurrah to all of the parts that they have left so that they don't have to innovate. And unfortunately, that's kind of like, it's playing it safe. Why? I love this car. Twin turbos, I love it. Playing it safe this day and age is completely the wrong answer. I think that all of you can pretty much agree. Ford, please stop saying that you're listening to us and actually do that. Actually do cup your ears, listen to the mass of people. The Mach 1 has always had a shaker hood. And for whatever reason this time it doesn't. Why? Well, it's to save money. 
That's all this car is, is a money grab. It's nothing innovative, it's nothing special. Ford knows what they're doing. You're kidding yourself if you think that they don't. They do. I love you, Ford. I like the fact that you decided to go with the Tremec 3160 and basically a Mustang GT with 350 handling. I get that. It's a nice move in the right direction. But don't call it a Mach 1 and pretend like it's something that it's not. This is honestly just a Mustang GT that it should have been from a couple of years ago. I think if this car comes out with no ADM, no added markup value, which is probably not going to be true because it's supposed to be a limited run, right? Um, anything north of $55,000 for this car, I'm out. If Ford prices this car competitively just a little bit more than, let's say, a fully optioned PP1 car, then I'm all for it. You get, the, you get GT350 handling, transmission choices. Yes, you can't stack the handling package, which is unfortunate, with the auto, but you still get a lot of other goodies. So I think the value is somewhat there, and people will buy this car. They will do it. But I think it is a complete... How do I say this nicely? I'm trying to... F Ford screwed up. They made a Mach 1, and it's not a Mach 1. They put Mach 1 emblems on the side of a GT350 with a Coyote V8 and think it's something special and different and innovative. It's just a parts bin car. So there's a lot of people out there that like the new design, that like the new options. I do too. But we have to sit back and take a hard look at the truth. We have to tell the truth. And this car is nothing different. 480 horsepower with a GT350 manifold, intake manifold. Guess what? It's a bullet. That's all it is. It's a bullet. It's a bullet. Why Ford can we not get a straight line car? I mean, I get the fact that they're they're trying to market it as like a world class car that handles really good, does this, that, and the other. Trying to compete with higher brands out there for a lot less money. The problem is that things are getting a lot more expensive uh, with the Ford Mustang. That is not necessarily everything else because that is certainly true. But with the Ford Mustang, when I was growing up. It was always that affordable V8 that you could turn to. Highly customizable, normal high school student could figure out a way to buy a Mustang GT, but you can't anymore. Unless you're making $70,000, $80,000 plus, it's hard to afford a fully loaded Mustang GT. We're talking about a $50,000 plus car, so your payments are going to be seven to eight hundred dollars or more so yes you can go buy one pre-owned sure but when you do that you may or may not have a warranty depending on the mileage of the car the year of the car you know how old it is all of that that's a video for a whole that's a whole nother topic that's a whole nother discussion yes it's crazy to see things get so expensive but they're not really putting forth the effort into innovating something that's kind of new the mach one back in let's look at the the new Edge Mach 1, the 0304s were badass. Three valve, uh, basically it's a Cobra motor, just three valves and a four valve, but it was a step above the two valve 4.6 that was in those cars. It had more power, more performance. It was the big dog, kind of. I mean, you had the supercharged version with four valve, the 0304 Cobra, the Terminator, but if you wanted that nice middle ground, I mean, the Mach 1 was it. The new Mach 1 looks like a GT350 front end replica ripoff, no shaker hood, and they took the, the styling right off of the 19 GT350 or base model GT500 with the spoiler. But I mean, it's a nice looking spoiler, don't get me wrong, I love it, but there's nothing that they have done to the car that we know about so far that is just mind blowing awesome. There's no reason that I would ever want to take my Mustang GT and sell or trade for a Mach 1. And if I was a new buyer, honestly, I would have a hard time not choosing a PP1 Mustang over the Mach 1. I gotta get turned around here. <laughs> I think we're like 12 minutes in. I don't know how I'm gonna edit this video, but I know it's, it's rambling hissy fit stuff but I've talked to a couple of my friends all my friends over the past couple of days and they, they watched my first video they're like Alex man Xander look you know you're defending a little too bit too much you got to tell the truth and that's what this this video is all about is telling the truth it's a parts bin car 
That's all it is. I wish that Ford would have brought us something that was a little bit different, a little bit more innovative, a little bit uh, more special, if you will. Um, I would have liked to have seen 500 plus horsepower, possibly a dual clutch transmission with a Coyote Gen 3 V8. I would have been all over it, honestly. But if you get the handling package, please, please let us pay the extra money and buy the auto. Maybe not everybody's about the auto, but the thing is that I want to stress to everybody is give us the option. Please allow us the ability to choose what we want in our sports cars, our muscle cars, our Mustangs, the things that we spend so much money on. Stop segregating, stop stacking these, these you know, it'd be so interesting when next year, the final year, they actually say, oh, guess what? You can buy the performance package the, or the handling package with the 10-speed auto. I bet you that happens. Just wait and find out. And then all of the 2021 owners are gonna just cry and have a fit. And I can't blame them because that's exactly what they do every single time. Look at the 2018 Mustang GT prime example you can finally get a 10 speed with the performance package but you opted for the manual what happened the next year what happened in 2019 they gave the option for ref match you think that they didn't have that that technology ready to go <laughs> if you say no you're kidding yourself they absolutely did they held out and now that is a good way to make money but it's a good way to piss everybody off too kind of like the uh, 2010 Mustang GT. Everybody remembers what happened then. The 2010 Mustang GT was possibly the biggest flop ever because they kept the 4.6, but it was the new chassis. It was the new, the new styling, right? The next year, 2011, first gen Coyote, a hundred more horsepower for the same money. Are you kidding me? Money grab, I think is what it is. This is a parts bin car. They didn't want to reinvent the wheel. Uh, and you know, we got the S650 coming out, so I, I understand that they're trying to utilize what they have. It costs them less money to throw a car together, but I wish that they would have just held off, done it right, because I really feel like it shames. I really feel like it shames over the original and also the new edge Mach 1. That's my thoughts. Don't know if you agree with them or not. It is what it is. That's just my personal opinion, my humble opinion. I love Ford. I'm a Ford Mustang owner. I'm a Ford Mustang channel. And uh, yeah, I just wish that they would have done things a little bit different. Let me know what you think in the comments. See you guys later.